Love you, Heavenly Father, Lord. We come into your presence this morning. We thank you for the fresh outpouring of the Spirit that is moving in our midst, O oh God. Lord, you said times of refreshing will come. This morning, we thank you for opening heaven and pouring down your Spirit like a refreshing rain upon a dry land. This morning, as we spend a few minutes in the Word of the Lord, let the power of the Word of God be revealed in this place. Spirit of God, we give you full control of today's service, O oh Lord. Amen. Break everything that needs to be breaking this morning. Touch the hearts of every individual that needs to be touched, O oh God. Speak to every person that needs to hear your clear voice, O oh God. This morning, we bind every hindering spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the Spirit of the Lord accomplish what it sets to accomplish this morning, O oh Lord. Hide me under the cross. Strengthen me this morning, O oh God. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Oh, what a mighty presence is moving in our midst. <laughs> Last night I was struggling to go to sleep. I was having problems with my throat. But more than that, I was really burdened in my heart. Lord, why are we not able to see the presence and the outpouring of the Holy Ghost in a mighty way? Last two, three, two days, we were able to sense in the presence of the Lord together, minister, hear the word of God together. But I was not satisfied because I did not feel the tangible glory of the Lord. But this morning, as I was sitting here, we were worshipping the Lord. A great presence came upon me. I thank the Lord for what He's doing in our midst. I know that time has gone forward. I just want to share a word and we'll conclu quickly conclude this part of the service. Gospel of Luke, chapter number 1. Verse number 12, 13, 14, and 15. Luke was in the Suvisheja on Namathiyam, Padaranda Mudul, Padinanja Matavakim Beravaikiam. Amen. Praise the Lord. Zacharias, do not fear, for your prayer has been answered. Last night, as I was spending time in the presence of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord directed me to this scripture portion to speak to you this morning. When we study about the life of Zacharias and Elizabeth, chapter 1 says that they were obedient in all the commandments of the Lord. Now, why does he say all the commandments of the Lord? Why is the scripture specific to specify whose commandments they were obedient to? In order to understand that, we have to understand the historical context of that time. The Roman government had taken control of the land of Israel at that time. And when they have taken over, their culture is a pagan culture. In theological terms, we call Hellenistic or Greek-influenced culture. And so they brought that culture, that pagan, their, uh, their paganism, humanism, modernism, all these different ideologies that influenced and shaped the Roman society, they brought all that with them to the land of Israel. Now for the people in Israel, God had already given them a very clear set of instructions and commandments to follow. <laughs> That was given to them by the hand of the servant Moses. And God made it very clear. To my people, this is what I expect. These are my commandments that I am giving to my people for follow. So what happens is, the laws that were given by God to the people of Israel, and the laws that were instituted by the Roman society or culture, contradicted each other. In today's terminology, we call that culture clash. Culture clash. Because a lot of these two things don't go hand in hand with each other. For example, I'll give you an example. 
The, Bible, the scripture tells the people of Israel there is a clear rule about marriage, about family life, who can get married, how they should get married. All these things were clearly instructed by, him, by Moses to the people of Israel. The Roman culture practiced no such thing. You can marry whoever you want, whenever you want, how many times you want. There was no such rule. In fact, they were a very sexually driven culture in society. So, in other words, what was a sin in the Israelites or in the, in the laws of the Israelites was acceptable under the Roman law. When this culture clash occurred, three different responses came out from the society. <clears throat> One group of people said, we don't care about what the law of Moses says. We don't care about what the scripture says. We like their system. We like their rules. We like what they're doing. So what we're going to do? We're going to reject the scripture and accept the culture. Reject the scripture and accept the culture. This group of people were known as the Sadducees. There were other really, but the highly rich, highly influential people, the well off in society, they fell in this category. They did not care what the scriptures taught. Their concern was to be accepted in the society, to be like the Romans, to become one with the Romans, to, to, to meet their standard. Praise the Lord. The second group of people, they did not want to completely reject the scripture, but they did not completely want to reject the culture either. They kind of wanted to find a middle ground in between these two. So you know what they did? They did not reject the scripture. They reinterpreted the scripture. Jesus. They began to interpret the word in their own way to justify them having a middle ground between these two things. Between the scripture and between the culture. So look at that. One group rejects. The second group reinterprets but in the midst of this there was a remnant <laughs> praise the lord people like Zacharias and Elizabeth said it does not matter what the culture says it does not matter what the society says it does not matter what the government says our God has given us a clear pattern a clear rule to follow we will fully accept and live accordingly to the word that he has given us. They did not reject the scripture. They did not reinterpret the scripture. They received the scripture and lived accordingly. <coughs> huh. This morning, what category do we fall in? What category do we fall in today? We are not talking about ungodly people or, or people who don't know God. We, tonight, this morning, the Spirit of the Lord is asking the church of the living God. What is your response to the culture clash we see today? Do you reject the word of God? Do you reinterpret the word of God to justify your lifestyle and your decisions? Or do you say, no, my word has been given to me. I receive it. I believe it. And I accept it for my life, for my family, for my walk with the Lord, for my walk in this world. Amen. About what Zacharias and Elizabeth were people who walked according to the commandments of the Lord. Obeyed everything. And the second thing I found interesting is. They have been serving in the temple of the Lord. Right? They were serving the temple of the Lord. In fact the Bible says clearly. When the Lord fell for Zacharias to minister. He went and served. Right? 
ഇഫ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ടുഡേസ് ഡേ എന്നെ ജീവിച്ച പാസ്റ്റർ എനിക്ക് എനിക്ക് വയ്യ ലൈവ് സ്ട്രീമിൻ്റെ ലിങ്ക് ഉണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ഒന്ന് അയക്കണം ഐം ടയർ പാസ്റ്റർ ഐ ക്യാൻ കം ഓൾ ദ വേ ദേർ ഇഫ് ദർസ് എ ലൈവ് സ്ട്രീം ലിങ്ക് പ്ലീസ് സെൻഡ് ജീസസ് അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ദാറ്റ് ഡേ എൻ ഐജ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ദ ഡേയ്സ് ഓഫ് കൺവീനിയൻസ് for zacharias and elizabeth to go to the temple that is a minimum several days of journey it is not a 15 minute car ride down the fr- the freeway this old apachari namachi are walking all the way to the temple and the temple is on top of a mountain it is not on a level ground they have to climb the mountain to get to the house of god <laughs> you don't think that apachin had arthritis <laughs> you don't think that apachin had leg like pain knee pain elbow pain back pain <laughs> jesus <laughs> but his commitment to the house of god amen <laughs> what is our commitment to the house of god Alleluia. jesus yes. oh glory when the church puts a fasting prayer how many of us make the effort to come to the house of god yes. oh yes. jesus now i know there were many people who had different commitments this past week and there was a wedding there was a funeral i understand all that i'm not criticizing anybody but even if you count all the people who had to travel for those commitments still the tally is not adding up jesus hello i am assuming the rest of the people all had work praise the lord hmm what is the commitment to the church what is our commitment to the house of god <laughs> let me ask this question when we cannot even commit ourselves to attend the house of god when we have no other commitments and no other no other no other scheduling conflicts why are we asking god for a new building Praise the Lord. This morning I'm ministering under the authority the Lord Jesus Christ has given me as a servant of God. The spirit of the Lord is bringing correction into the house of the Lord. Jesus. Zacharias and Elizabeth are committed to the house of God. When he has to go he's there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. The Bible says when Zechariah was ministering according to the ordinance given to him by the high priest. <laughs> the Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. While he was ministering the ministry of incense. The Bible says the angel of the Lord appeared in now my question to you this morning is if an angel of the lord appears in ipc hebron this morning what is our response you know what we will say to the angel angel we're so happy you joined us today we have a uh, malayalam worship and then english message then after that we have english worship then we have malayalam message then after that we have to do holy communion at the end you can take 2 minutes for greetings yes or no yes, yes. we are so concerned about our program this morning the spirit of the lord is saying why want to introduce a program that is not in your program ha! jesus udara mahamdala diya i am all for order the church of god needs an order the church of god needs a direction church of god needs a plan but there must be a flexibility within this program to allow the spirit of god to move Amen. we pray
plan the whole thing from 10 o'clock to 12 30 the complete thing and then we tell God God in between the in Malayalam worship and the English message there will be three minutes if you want to do something please do something in those three minutes God says find somebody else he's not a God that works in your program he's not a God that works under your schedule you want the spirit of the Lord to move in this church? <laughs> Bring a flexibility in the program. Bring a flexibility in the rituals and say, Lord, we have this desire, but if you take over, we won't stop you. <laughs> Jesus. Glory. The Pentecostal church is not a program driven church. We are a spirit led church. We are a spirit led church. Our services are determined by the spirit of God. Which means even if I don't get to speak all 10 of my points, that's okay. As long as the spirit of the Lord moves and accomplishes what the spirit wants to do. <laughs> Jesus. Several weeks back in, our, in the American church we attend. There's no Malayali church in where we live. So we are attending the Assemblies of God American church. In the middle of the worship, the pastor stood up, cut the worship and said, I want to share a quick point from the word and we're going to pray. He had a, I'm part of the ministerial team there. So I know he had a full sermon prepared. He read one verse, said one point, took all together 10 minutes, called the people up forward to pray. 20 people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of tongues. One point, but 20 people filled. Here we are saying 20 points, not even one person is getting. <laughs> Jesus. Can the spirit of the Lord move in this church? Can he take control of the service? That may mean we may not be able to sing our English songs. Is that okay? That may mean we may not have one hour full of full message. Is that okay? Yes. Jesus. Let the spirit of the Lord do what only he can do. God, do something in our midst this morning. That's not in our program. That's not in our agenda today morning. Lord, you take over today's service. You speak to your people. You minister to them. You touch them. You move in a way that you, in a way that you desire to do. We will not stand in the way. Yes. 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 Glory. Angel of the Lord goes to Zechariah and says, Your prayer has been answered. My question to you is, what was Zechariah praying inside the temple? Bible says he was doing the ministry of incense, which is the ministry of prayer. The Bible says the people were waiting outside the temple and praying. What were they praying? <laughs> they were not praying for a son, for Zechariah. What were they praying? 
Lord, bring the Messiah down. Bring the promised Savior down to this world. The angel of the Lord is saying, Zacharias, what you are praying and what the people out there are praying has been answered. It is time. It is time for that Messiah to come into this world. <laughs> and not only am I answering the prayer of the church, <laughs> you have an individual prayer request in your life, Zacharias. <laughs> I'm answering that as well. Ha. Jesus, not just the prayer of the community, not just the prayer of the church, your individual prayer request is being answered today too. Praise the Lord. This morning the Lord is speaking to individuals here. I'm just moving very quickly. But the Lord is speaking to different individuals here today. Ha. Zacharias cannot believe this. Why he cannot believe this? Because he knows there are certain physical limitations in his body. Certain physical limitations in his wife's body. That is not going to make it possible to accomplish what this angel is saying. <laughs> but the angel of the Lord makes one thing very clear. <laughs> oh, Zacharias, <laughs> even as this message is being delivered to you, there is a supernatural power that is moving upon your body and your wife's body. <laughs> that breaks the limitation and brings about the fulfillment of the promise of God. In order for the promise to be fulfilled, in order for the plan of God to be fulfilled, oh yes, there are limitations, there are boundaries, there are barriers, but there is a divine power that moves beyond those things. Ah. What is the promise of God for your life? What is the promise of God for your family? What is the promise of God concerning this church? <laughs> despite all the limitations, despite all the um, and things that is moving negatively or in a negative factor in this, in this, in this situation. Ha! The power of God is able to surpass all these things and bring about the completion of his plan. The power of God that brings about the fulfillment of God's promise. Let me conclude with this. You know what the greatest promise that God has spoken to us? The greatest promise He's spoken to me and you is not a new house. It's not a new job. It's not a new family, new husband, wife. No. The greatest promise he has given us is, I am coming back for you. <laughs> I am coming back to take you with me. But you know what? <laughs> there was a big question there. What happens if I die before that coming takes place? What happens if I die? <laughs> today morning, if I breathe, after today's service, if I breathe my last breath, they will put my body in that coffin. <laughs> and the men of God will take one hand of dirt and say, So how did I? I said, I said, I said, I said, Brother, you go and take your rest. In the final days to take your reward. You will rise up again. Ha! What a prophetic word. At that moment, nobody will clap their hands and shout for a big joy. Everybody will be crying and weeping there. 
But when the trumpet sounds, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead will move upon my body. Yes, he will move upon my earthly body. I will rise up. I will rise up. Oh, there is a power that completes the plan of God. There is a power that brings to fruition the promise of God. That power is moving here today. That power is touching you today. Udara bala ba, shandala bala, hamdal kama nega nega, saydara bala ba, hamdala diya. Yes, yes, yes. Udara ba, shandala diya, raba kama 